Opposed, no. Mr. Chairman, I move that to the best of each board member's knowledge that only personnel matters pursuant to section 2.2-3711A1 of the Code of Virginia 1950 as amended specifically a personnel matter concerning the terms and conditions of the employment of the county attorney were discussed. Second. Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Supervisor Dunn. Aye. 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 Ms. Lofton. Aye. Ms. Wells. Supervisor Slaughter. Aye. Chairman votes aye and the motion carries. We'll reconvene in open session in one minute. All right, call meeting to order. Supervisor Hess, invocation. Uh, please bow your heads. Almighty God, as we look back on the calendar year that has just ended, we're reminded that you're the source of the many blessings we received. And we're grateful to you for the hope and promise this new year brings. Father, we're also reminded on this winter evening that you are the creator and the giver of life. And we thank you for the opportunity to live in this beautiful county, in this wonderful commonwealth, and in this great nation where we enjoy the freedoms provided for in our Constitution, including the freedom to assemble here tonight. And Father, we offer our thanks to those who serve and have served in our armed forces defending those freedoms. We are truly blessed by you through them. And we pause to give thanks to you for the employees of Frederick County for their service to our citizens. And we are especially grateful for the deputies and fire and rescue personnel who stood at the ready through the holidays while we were ce celebrating safe and warm in our homes. And Father, tonight we ask that you gift Chuck DeHaven with a clear vision and discernment as he begins his service as chairman. And we ask for your strength and guidance for this board to do the tasks set before you set before us and give us wisdom as we face decisions affecting the future of our county. Heavenly Father, make us all more deeply aware of our heritage, recognizing not only our rights, but also our duties and responsibilities as citizens. Father God, we dedicate ourselves in service to you and to the citizens of Frederick County. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. 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 Supervisor Lofting, can you lead us in the pledge? Stand, face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to Virginia Code uh, 1950 as amended, the board's required to organize its functions at the first meeting in January. Um, item number A is election of a vice president, uh, I mean a vice chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. If I may, I would like to nominate, I'm sorry, did you That's right, you go right ahead. I would like to nominate Mr. Supervisor Gene Fisher to serve as vice chairman. Second, Mr. Chairman. Nomination of Gene Fisher and a second as, as vice chairman for 2016. Are there any further nominations? Motion to no close nominations. Move to close nominations. Is there a second? Second. 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 All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. We'll elect uh, Gene Fisher as chairman, vice chairman for the coming year. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Unanimously elected as vice chairman. Um, Supervisor Fisher couldn't be with us this evening, but we are confident he'll be here at our next meeting. So. Um, adoption rules of procedure, attachment A. How would the committee like to handle these? I make a motion for approval. A motion to adopt. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Rules of procedure are adopted. Uh, selection of a parliamentarian. Open the floor for nominations. Mr. Chairman, I move that the uh, county attorney, Rod Williams, be appointed parliamentarian. Um, that role normally, and, and I'll, accept, I'll accept that, um, that role normally has been um, our county administrator. Excuse me. Happy to. Amend my motion to uh, appoint the county administrator. Shucks. 
Okay. <laughs> Nearly dodged. <laughs> so we have a motion and a second to, to elect our county administrators, our parliamentarian for 2016. Second. Second. Is there, is there a motion to close nominations? Move to close nominations. Second. 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 All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. We have a motion and second to elect our county administrator, Ms. Garten, as our parliamentarian for the coming year. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Item number D is the selection time place of regular meetings. It's attachment B which calls out our normal process. Mr. Chairman, I would move to approve the selection of the time and place for regular meetings on the attachment. Sir, second? Second. Second. Any discussion? You might want to state that just for the benefit of the audience and the public. Sure. You want me to do it? Because sure. I have it right in front if of me. You, if, you, if you have it in front of you, I it's have to wait second, for my machine. It's to set the time and place of regular meetings to the, as the second and fourth Wednesday of each month at 7 p.m. in the Board of Supervisors Meeting Room, County Admin Building, 107 North Kent Street, Winchester, Virginia, um, for 2016. If the meeting is canceled due to inclement weather, then it will take place on the following evening. It is our many years of approach. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. I don't know if Chairman would ask the board's endorsement of the uh, committee and, and board assignments for the coming year. Entertain a motion to that effect. So move, Mr. Chairman. Motion to endorse. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Appreciate that. Um, Next item is an adoption of the agenda. Are there any changes? No? Is there a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second? Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Agenda is adopted. Consent agenda. <clears throat> Tentatively, the consent agenda items for consent are tabs D, H, I, K, and L. Are there any changes to those? <coughs> Not that I know of. All right. Move sure. for adoption of the consent agenda, Mr. Chairman. A motion to adopt. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. <laughs> Items number D, H, I, K, and L are approved on consent. Citizen comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to comment on agenda items only that are not subject to public hearing. Did anyone sign up? No. No. All right. Board of Supervisors comments. Are there any? Okay. Minutes were improved under consent. Item number one is the presentation of a resolution of appreciation for Eric R. Lawrence. Is Mr. Lawrence with us? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> you come forward. Stuff is built in that book reader. But yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> <laughs> is this on? Yes. yes. Good. It's a resolution of appreciation for Eric R. Lawrence, Director of Planning and Development, Frederick County. Whereas Eric R. Lawrence served the citizens of Frederick County, Virginia for approximately 20 years in the Department of Planning and Development. And whereas Mr. Lawrence began his career with Frederick County first as a planner, then serving as zoning administrator, deputy director, finally rising to the level of Director of Planning and Development. And whereas through his leadership, department, uh, the department completed the Rural Areas Study, culminating the adoption of the Rural Areas Recommendation and Report, established the Conservation Easement Authority, and secured the first conservation easement through a partnership with Potomac Conservancy, and completed a comprehensive rewrite of the comprehensive plan. And whereas Mr. Lawrence oversaw the established, the first transfer of development rights TDR program in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Frederick County Board of Supervisors 
extends its sincerest thanks to Eric R. Lawrence for his leadership and wishes him all the best in his future endeavors. Be it further resolved that this resolution be spread across the minutes of the Frederick County Board of Supervisors for all citizens to reflect upon the accomplishments of this public servants. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Number two, committee appointments. These things are getting too slow. The community policy management team, it's a parent representative. There's an attached application. There's Leslie Stewart. <sighs> How would the board like to handle this one? Move appointment of <clears throat> Leslie Stewart to the community policy and management team. I have a motion to appoint. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ms. Leslie Stewart is appointed to the community policy and management team. Um, Social Services Stonewall. We have an application. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I would like to um, move for approval to appoint Patricia Riley to the uh, Social Services Board as the Stonewall Magisterial District um, representative. So we have a motion. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Ms. Pat Riley is appointed to serve uh, Social Services Board. Uh, Board of Zoning Appeals, Back Creek. Mr. Chairman, I've been in contact with a couple of people who have not finalized anything yet, but should have that ready by our next meeting. Thank you, sir. Northwestern Community Services Board, it looks like we have two resignations. Um, we're waiting for a, a, a recommendation from their board, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so we'll move on. Um, Parks and Recs Commission, Redbud, Roger Dunn. I'll have somebody here within two to four weeks. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have a Parks and Recs Commission, Gainsboro. Are we ready? I uh, have not checked with the uh, current occupant and, uh, of that position, and her term does not expire until February. I'm sure I'll <clears throat> speak with her between now and then. Thank you, sir. And it looks like we have an upcoming uh, planning commissioner from Stonewall District. Supervisor Slaughter? I'm still working on that, sir. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. I think that concludes our committee list. Item number three is a request from the commissioner uh, for a refund. Who's handling that one? Um, I am. Yes, ma'am. Um, the first item is a request to approve a refund and the appropriation accordingly in the amount of 2800 $33.92 for a business license tax refund for 2014 and 15 and personal property taxes in 2015 um, for Glass America Southeast Incorporated uh, caused by the fact that the although the operation of the company uh, is still in Frederick County, um, there is new ownership. So the new owner will pay the same amount that you're um, returning. So you need a supplemental appropriation in the amount of 2833.92. Uh, would the board like to handle this one? Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the refund and the corresponding uh, supplemental appropriation. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> Supervisor Slaughter. Aye. Supervisor Wells. Aye. Supervisor Lofton. Aye. Supervisor Hess. Aye. Supervisor Dunn. Aye. Chairman votes aye and the motion carries. Next. The second one um, is the authorization um, for a refund to Crown Cork and Seal Company USA Incorporated in the amount of $352,334.40 um, 
Um, this amount represents personal property taxes in 2012, 13, and 14. That is the result of packaging equipment being taxed as machinery and tools, which is not um, an appropriate category. So you would need a supplemental appropriation in that amount. The board like to handle the request. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the refund and of the uh, supplement, corresponding supplemental appropriation. A motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? Supervisor Dunn. Aye. Supervisor Hess. Aye. Supervisor Lofton. Aye. Supervisor Wells. Aye. Supervisor Slaughter. Aye. Chairman votes aye and the motion carries. I think that brings us to the request for adoption of Frederick County's 2016 Emergency Operations Plan. Uh, yes, sir, you have that in your packet and Chester Locke from the, um, who's the Deputy Emergency Management Coordinator is here to answer any questions you may have. It's a huge document. Um, it is um, up for review and revision and renewal. I believe it's every five years, so we're up. Um, and we need to adopt it no later than January 31st. So we had a brief discussion about this, that if you actually need uh, to postpone it until next um, meeting, you could. Um, and we would still be able to meet the deadline. But Chester's here to answer any questions you may have and to elaborate on any of that that you would like to hear. Okay. At least I saw him a minute ago. I did too. Yeah. Um, did you have anything you'd like to add? You need to come to the mic. Please. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, all the changes were by recommendation of the state, which goes through a review, a customer review. Um, the document used to be a renewal in five years. It's now four years. And so a lot of the information that was taken out was just critical information, uh, personal information that didn't need to be in it and some redundancy in some forms that we put in some other packets just to try to condense it and get it, things that didn't really need to be in the plan itself. Thank you, sir. The board have any questions? Supervisor Lofton. Uh, Mr. Locke, um, I see that we have uh, some required committees on there. Have those committees, I know we have them on a committee list, are they intact, those committees? Are those members still viable members of those committees like the LAPC? Yes. Okay. Um, that's the only question I had. Yeah. Any other questions? Anyone? Yes, sir. Supervisor Dunn. Has there been anything significant different between this and its presses? I, I did read through it, but um, I didn't see anything that's said here, the differences. So to the best of your knowledge, are there any significant differences? No, there's nothing significant. And actually, by with, with the changes, it reduced by about 15 or 20 pages. And that was about all. And a lot of it was just forms. That's like uh, an example of the forms that the building department would use if we had buildings damaged in a windstorm, they would go in and post them uninhabitable, uh, uninhabitable, unsafe, you know, keep out, things like that. Those forms were taken out of the document because they just didn't need to be there. And the plan on how that's done is still in the book, just the, the examples were taken out. Thank you. Any others? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Supervisor Slaughter. Um, I do. I would like to know how often we go through training exercises to make ourselves emergency ready for the citizens. With the new faces on the board, <laughs> I would recommend sooner than later. Um, and that goes. I mean, most of our department heads have stayed the same, and it's usually our department heads that come in our EOC or their appointees, and, and most of that's been pretty current. Um, there are some training uh, needs that perhaps we can take care of, but with, there's a lot of new faces on the board, we can address that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes, sir, Supervisor. Not a question. Um, maybe this is the proper time to bring it up. Um, but if you make a note and reading through it, uh, on page 15, next to the last bullet, uh, there's a statement there that says we're gonna return to the re-incident status, should that be pre-incident status? Yes, sir, it would. And then uh, on page 29, the first paragraph, after <coughs> county administrator says, or his designee, maybe that should be their designee, 
instead of his just a little wordsmithing here, but I thought that's yeah, that's not a problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you for catching it. I think I think his is generally accepted to be sort of generic, well, and I, I don't have sure. any personal insult with that. So okay, I just want to make sure. I think you can say he and his generically, and it's no problem. All right, whatever the county administrator is comfortable with, I'm comfortable <laughs> with. Works for me. I'll make it his or her. How about that? <laughs> Thank you, Chester. Other questions? How would the board like to handle it? I'd like to go ahead and move for adoption. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second. second Is any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Awesome. Emergency operations plan is adopted, and we thank you so much, Mr. Locke, for Herculean effort. It's a huge document and very <clears throat> tedious work. We appreciate it. It's just item number seven is a resolution authorizing purchase of property at 692 Old Charlestown Road, Stevenson, Virginia, an authorization of appropriation of proffer funds. Who's handling this one? Good evening, sir. Okay, I'll let Jason do it. Uh, members of the board, the uh, action being requested at this time is the approval of a general fund supplemental appropriation of uh, $92,000 in recreation proffer funds uh, to acquire property located at 692 Old Charlestown Road. Um, and also the adoption of the attached resolution um, authorizing the purchase of the property with proffer funds. Um, as you can see in your packet by the property's location in relation to Snowden Bridge Park, uh, acquiring the 0.912 acre parcel will enhance the future park uh, layouts for Snowden Bridge Park. The property has a 39 by 40 metal insulated uh, building and, <coughs> is all, and it's in good condition. And it also has a 20 by 24 picnic shelter as well on the property. The property was appraised at $92,000 and at the uh, finance committee or the Frederick County Finance Committee at its December 16th meeting uh, did recommend approval of 92,000 in proffer funds to acquire the property. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions? Anyone? Um, I recall that this uh, greatly enhances the usability of the park. I mean, it gives you some flex additional flexibility in terms of layout. Right? It does, yes, sir. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. How would the board like to handle this one? Move approval of the supplemental appropriation and the resolutions. Resolution to approve. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any further discussion? None. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Brings us to item number three, the Finance Committee report. Supervisor Slaughter. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Finance Committee meeting was held uh, on the first floor conference room at 107 North Kent Street on Wednesday, December 16th, 2015 at 8 a.m. Member Richard Schickel was absent. Um, the first item on the agenda was the NRA DC superintendent request a NRA DC fund balance, or excuse me, fund budget transfer in the amount of 380,000 from medical insurance to overtime and merit reserve. Policy requires board approval to transfer out of a fringe benefit line item. The committee recommended approval and I would so move. Motion to second, approve. Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any discussion? Question. Question. Surprise so done. Mr. Chairman, can you go into the reason for the three hundred eighty thousand dollar transfer? Um, is it being used for, especially with the words merit, um, overtime pay, and merit pay? So, I read the article, but it, is there a little bit more of an explanation? If no one else. Wants to, I will attempt, but we're working from my memory, which is probably a little risky. Um, the, th I, I the 380 that. occurred um, for extra insurance setback that had been anticipated, needed for 1617. 
um, or 1516 that that wasn't spent and so they want to transfer and our <coughs> policy requires approval to transfer out of that line item okay. you know any benefit line item all right um, so that's why you're being asked to approve that thank the you merit was was used for for merit salary increases according to their policies and procedures that um, had not been active during the downturn and they're wanting to reestablish some funding into that line item. Now, that's my memory. It's as close as I can get for you. If we're not comfortable, we can get better answers for you. Mr. Chairman, you've been square with me, so I appreciate that. Yes. Um, could, I think yes. to some extent it's um, the salary um, line items needed to be increased because we approved a merit after the budget was adopted. So that made the salary line items need to have um, extra money moved into them. And overtime is because of um, vacancies that he has had and he's had to incur overtime in order to cover for the vacancies. Does it leave a vacancy on medical insurance? No. Okay. They were excess. Thank you. And, and if, I, if I may add, um, with regard to the vacancies at the Finance Committee, we were told that, that they are, their staffing levels are being brought up to par. Thank you. So that should help in that regard. Thank you. Other questions? We are ready to vote? Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Hess? Aye. Supervisor Lofton? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Professor Slaughter, right. Chairman votes aye and the motion carries. Item number two. <laughs> the voter registrar requests a general fund supplemental appropriation in the amount of $38,614. The amount represents cost associated with the March 2016 presidential primaries. Local funds are required and referenced in memo four, page four and five, um, we would at some point be reimbursed from the state. However, we do need to make the supplemental appropriation. Um, the committee recommended approval, and I would so move. Second, Mr. Chairman. Motion to approve and a second. Discussion? <coughs> Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Lofton? Aye. Supervisor Hess? Aye. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Chairman votes aye, and the motion carries. Item number four. Okay, the last item, the planning a deputy director requests a general fund supplemental appropriation in the amount of $100,000. This represents a monetary contribution proffered related to the Stevenson Village Plan Residential Community for the Clearbrook Volunteer Fire and Rescue Company. The committee recommended approval, and I would so move, Mr. Chairman. A motion to approve is our second. Second, Mr. Chairman. Any questions? Discussion? Hearing none. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Hess? Aye. Supervisor Lofton? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Chairman votes aye and the motion carries. You that concluded your report? Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Planning Commission business. We have a public hearing for item number one, conditional use permit 04-15. For Jenny Lee and Kung Lee, I hope I pronounced it correctly. My apologies if I did not. Submitted for modification to CUP number 22-04 to add a monument sign. The property is located at 549 Valley Mill Road, Route 659, and is identified with property identification number 55-A-56 in the Red Bud, Bud Magisteria Stereo District. Mr. Chair. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the board, uh, this um, <clears throat> conditional use permit pointed out is for a, a modification uh, to a current conditional use permit that we have on the property. Uh, the property currently is being used as an adult uh, care facility and is owned RP, residential performance. The adjoining par uh, parcels uh, to this property are all RP and their use is residential. And again, this uh, conditional use permit, as pointed out, was for a monument uh, type sign. Uh, this uh, conditional use permit, um, the reason we're here tonight, I guess, to give you a real quick history, uh, the Rose, uh, this was known for, I think, most of uh, folks on the board is the Rose Memorial 
uh, adult care facility, which came into, uh, came into play uh, through a conditional use permit uh, 0296. And again, that was for a 26-bed uh, adult care facility. It was modified in 2006 through, again, through a conditional reuse permit to add eight more beds and a physical therapy room. However, through the two uh, conditional use permits, there was never one for a sign. As you're well aware of, any conditional use permit has uh, conditions assigned to it, and if there's any modifications, they have to come before this uh, body for approval. If I can turn your attention to the uh, slides, or excuse me, to the uh, map at your left, there's a layout of the property on Valley Mill Road. It's, uh, of course, outlaid in uh, the black. Um, aerial photograph, it's there, it has been there. Uh, really no, no surprises there. This, uh, and I'm gonna blow this up a little bit if you can see where it circles, where the sign will be located uh, on the property. Again, there uh, is no, no permanent sign out there now. I know there has been a sign out there, and that sign will be taken down. Um, that's what the applicant had called about it. It had changed hands and wanted a permanent sign, and, uh, staff looking through the conditional uses, the two permits that we had showed it did not have a sign. So that, again, that's why we're here today. Um, should the Board of Supervisors uh, find this use to be appropriate, the Planning Commission recommended the following conditions be attached, that all review agency comments and requirements shall be complied with at all times to include the approved conditions of CUP uh, 02-96 and conditional use permit or CUP number 2204 for this adult care facility. Uh, and then also uh, condition two, that there be one monument sign, 44 square foot in size and five feet in, sign allowed on, uh, in size allowed on the property. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll answer any questions you or any board members may have on this modification of uh, the conditional use permit for the, road, uh, for the, the adult care facility on Valley Mill Road. The applicant is also here to answer any questions you or any board members may have. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, Mr. Turn, uh, could you go back to the uh, aerial photo for just a second? Yeah, the uh, property across the street is also part of the same property or subject to the same CUPs. Uh, yes, it is part. It is part of the. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, what had happened? We if when we realigned Valley Mill Road, and I I cannot remember the year. It split the property. Right. But yes, sir, it does apply because it is one whole property. Okay. The other question uh, I had is this, is it intended, you know, or maybe we should ask the applicant for the sign to be lighted? Would it be permitted for it to be lit? It's actually a, um, it's a it, it, that question was asked at the Planning Commission. The sign will be lit. It'll be by a solar light that will have to meet our requirements for lighting. Uh, so, yes, it will be lit. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Chair? Anyone? Thank you, sir. Would the applicant like to add anything? Were there any questions for the applicants? No? Okay. So this is a public hearing. Anyone who would like to speak either for or against this application, please come forward, state your name, your magisterial district, and limit your comments to three minutes, please. Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. How would the board like to handle this request? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I'd move that the uh, sign be adopted as, as presented. I have a motion to approve the conditional use permit as requested. Sir, second. Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion's carried. The conditional use permit 0415 is approved. Item number two is a public hearing, rezoning number 11-15 of Freedom Manor, submitted by Pannoni and Associates to rezone 13.8596 acres from RA Rural Areas District to the RP Residential Performance District and 33.6819 acres from the RP Residential Performance District to the RP Residential Performance District with proffers. Properties are located east and adjacent to Paper Mill Road, Route 644, approximately 2,300 feet, I assume, northwest of the existing signalized intersection of Front Royal Pike, Route 522, and Paper Mill Road, Route 644, and are identified by property identification numbers 64-A-23, 64-A-20, and 64-A-19 in the Shawnee Magisterial District. 
Good morning, Ms. Perkins. Afternoon, evening. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The Freedom Manor rezoning application seeks to rezone 33.6 acres from the RP, which is our residential performance district, and 13.8 acres from the RA, rural areas district, to the RP district with proffers. Now, note that of the 33 acres of existing RP zoned land, 26 acres were previously rezoned back in 2005 under the same name, Freedom Manor. This is the location map on the screen to your left of the three properties. We have the properties located in this area. And then for reference, we have Route 522 in this location and then Paper Mill Road. Now this application seeks to revise the proffers for the 26 acre portion of uh, the tract, which is 64A23, as well as include the acreage from parcels 19 and 20. I would note that parcel 19 has historic RP zoning and parcel six, uh, 64A20 is currently split zoned RARP. Now the development before you would allow the construction of up to 300 residential units in two phases. Phase one consists of 100 single family detached units and phase two uh, would be 200 townhouse and multifamily or a mix of. <coughs> On the screen to your left is the generalized development plan for the property. It shows the access point, which is an offset roundabout on Paper Mill Road, the internal street connections. It also shows the inner parcel connections, the buffer and trails that are proffered with the development. <coughs> now, it, Initial access to the site, as I stated, is via the offset roundabout with Paper Mill Road. Um, there's also future additional access uh, with interparcel connections to the west, as well as a connection at the Madison Village development, which would happen at the 150th permit. The development also includes 10-foot pedestrian trails along Paper Mill, as well as the internal roads shown on the GDP. And there's also the trail along the Shenandoah Memorial Park and a evergreen buffer. Within the package, there's a monetary proffer contribution to the community facilities to offset the impacts of the residential units. Now, the attached and multifamily units amounts are all consistent with the development impact model. However, it should be noted that the applicant has reduced the proffer payment for the single family detached units, and that's in recognition of the existing 6.8 acres of existing RP zoned land, the historic zoning. The applicant is also proffered to allow the use of TDR or transfer development rights to pay for any of the monetary contributions for any of the 300 units. I would note that at your uh, seats, there is a minor proffer revision. Um, really what that does is two minor amendments. First is the removal of an inner parcel connection. That was added after the Planning Commission public hearing. It's the one that would connect to 522. And there's also an addition of a proffer uh, for transportation in the amount of $250 per residential unit for transportation. So with that, the Freedom Manor rezoning application is generally consistent with the future land uses shown in the 2030 comprehensive plan. The Planning Commission held a public hearing for this at their December 2nd meeting and they did recommend approval. So tonight following the public hearing, staff is seeking a decision from the board on this requested rezoning. With that, I'd be glad to answer any questions. I would note that Mr. John Bishop is here if you have any transportation questions, and the applicant is here, uh, Mr. Patrick Sowers from Pannoni Associates. Any questions from staff? Um, yes, sir. Just, I mean, I have a basic understanding of TDRs, but yes, uh, just, just how does that come into play in this in terms of, could, could you perhaps uh, enlighten me a little bit? That would come into play if the property owner wanted to purchase severed rights from agricultural land. They would work with that owner, sever the rights, and then transfer them onto this property. And then that would negate the proffer obligation on a single family to single family um, basis. Okay. Other questions of staff? Anyone? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mr. Dunn. May I ask Mr. Bishop a few questions? Surely, Mr. Bishop. Sir, Mr. Dunn. Mr. Bishop, um, this proper or this, this rezoning on its own request seems to be reasonable. My concern, Mr. Chairman, is that a number of reasonable rezonings eventually in the aggregate cause problems to transportation and cause problems to water issues. 
So this is not necessarily the time and place to have that discussion. But Mr. Bishop, if you continue to do this, my question to you is, do we eventually overload the road systems? And if so, can it be, how can it be addressed? Mr. Chairman, um, can we have at some point in time in the next three or four months, a more in-depth discussion on how the small number of rezonings in the aggregate then cause a greater impact um, on the road systems and on the waterways that we have. Um, so that would be the request. So Mr. Bishop, would you care to address this from the long term on Route 50, Route 7, 37, et cetera? Sure, I'll take a stab at it. Um, to, to answer your question very simply in terms of do we over time uh, through the approval of numerous smaller rezonings have the potential to overload some of our major system primary roadways? The answer is yes, potentially. Um, and as we go through those rezonings, they each do their independent traffic impact analysis, which tends to, especially in the sense of a smaller rezoning such as this, I know 300 units sounds like a lot to a lot of people, but in the great scheme of things, it's a fairly small rezoning for us. So it doesn't look out that far beyond a paper mill road and that sort of thing. And even if it did, it, it the impacts that it would show in terms of how much, for instance, uh, this particular rezoning feeds into the Route 5017 intersection wouldn't be enough independently to trigger an improvement. The, the method or the, the tool that's in place for us there is really uh, largely our participation in the Metropolitan Planning Organization. Uh, Every five years, we update the long-range transportation plan. It takes into account the growth that has been taking place. It projects future growth. And that is the, the vehicle in which we use to, to really mostly look at those impacts on our larger facilities and, and determine where the improvements are, are needed. Now, in terms of addressing those issues, that's, of course, um, as you all know, a, a much more complicated issue. Traditionally, we have looked to the state and federal uh, funding sources to address those major transportation improvements. Now, it's no surprise to anybody that uh, we haven't been seeing a lot of money for quite a, quite, quite, a, quite a long time. So there is a bit of a disconnect on that. So, uh, but that is currently our tool. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Chairman, yes. So, so going forward, as a relatively new supervisor, it would be helpful to me if, in conjunction with staff, in conjunction with you, in conjunction with VDOT and the state, that, that we can have a better feel for um, the impact of these small rezonings and, and, and the capacity that this area can hold. Other questions of staff? Anyone? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Sauer, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Patrick Sowers with Pannoni Associates. Um, rather than going through a, a, a full presentation, I think staff summed up pretty well the, um, the proposal. The one thing I would note, that the two changes before you tonight, one was the removal of an interparcel connector within the phase one area, and that's the southern area to the uh, eastern property boundary. And that was based on input received about concern of creating a cut through and possible safety concerns with creating that cut through. Um, and also, just, just to note, I think it's important to note that Westwood Drive, while it's, it looks like a possible connection point, I just want to be clear that there is a restrictive covenant on one record that restricts um, access to Westwood Drive to ensure that doesn't become a cut through as well. Um, secondly, the addition of a $250 per unit monetary proffer, and that's for transportation improvements within the general vicinity of the site. And that would provide for up to $75,000 for an offsite transportation improvement. Um, with that, I'd, I'd be happy to answer any questions. We think it's a, a, a rezoning that, that's consistent with the comp plan, both with the high density residential designation for the northern portions of the property, as well as the residential designation for the southern portions of the property. Um, and working with staff and VDOT and, and finding a solution for accommodating a southbound left turn movement by using an offset roundabout design. We did submit a, a separate roundabout justification study to VDOT for that offset roundabout design and did receive their approval, and that was key to getting a positive comment from VDOT for the, the proposed rezoning. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Questions from Mr. Sowers, anyone? Yes, sir, Supervisor Lofton. Mr. Sowers, if you, we removed the interparcel connector to the eastern property and boundary. That particular 
lot, so to speak, does not exist anymore. There, in other words, that that particular 56 foot right of way will be incorporated into other lots. It won't stay there, will it? Correct. Okay. It will, there will not be a reservation area for an inner parcel connector. Correct. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Cyrus, I understand that one of the uh, issues with the area is that the right of way on paper mill was particularly narrow. And yes, sir. That was one of the things that led to the offset roundabout. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Questions, Mr. Sowers? Thank you, sir. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Anyone like to speak concerning this application? <clears throat> Anyone at all? If you'd come forward, state your magisterial district and limit your comments to three minutes, please. Anyone? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. How would the board like to handle this one? Mr. Chairman, um, this is Shawnee, but since Mr. Supervisor Fresher isn't here, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the rezoning number 11-15 of Freedom Manor, submitted by Pannoni Associates to rezone 13.856 acres in rural area. I won't get the rest of it, but anyway, make a motion to approve. It's a motion to approve. Second, second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, do I have to include the two items that were addressed tonight? I think that you have recommended approval of the application as amended. As amended. Okay, good. Thank you. We, yeah, that was the question I on that one. That's correct. That's question I had clarification to make sure that we were including those two changes from the yes. packet material. My Thank understanding. You. Okay. Everyone seems to be nodding in the same direction. So we have a motion. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. And second? Yeah, yeah, second. Like to approve, or is there any further discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Um, excuse me. For, for rezoning, you probably need a roll call vote. Okay, we can do that. That's on me. So... Motion is second to approve. Supervisor Dunn. Aye. Supervisor Hess. Aye. Supervisor Lofton. Aye. Supervisor Wells. Aye. Supervisor Slaughter. Aye. Chairman votes aye and the motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Garden. Mm -hmm. uh, that brings us to item number three. It's an ordinance amendment to Frederick County Code, Chapter 165 Zoning, Article 2, Supplementary Use Regulations, Parking buffers and regulations for specific uses, part 201, supplementary use regulations, section 165-201.02, setback requirements, <coughs> revision to the Frederick County Zoning Ordinance to remove the R5 residential recreational community district supplemental use regulations for setback extensions. Ms. Perkins. Again, thank, thank you. you. Uh, back in 2011, the RP, the Residential Performance District Setbacks and Dimensional Requirements were revised to include setbacks for unroofed decks and structures. Now with that revision, the allowance for extensions into the setback within the Supplementary Use Regulation portion was changed to eliminate the RP and R4 districts. Now since the RP district dimensional requirements also apply to the R5 district, the R5 should have also been removed at that time, leaving only the RA and the MH1 districts within that particular supplementary use uh, ex exception. So the minor revision before you removes the R5 from the supplementary use regulation setback extension to ensure that that district utilizes the RP district's uh, decks and stoops extension provision as intended back in 2011. So the Planning Commission held a public hearing for this at their December meeting, and they did recommend approval. So tonight, following the public hearing, staff is seeking a decision on this text amendment. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Questions for Ms. Perkins? Yes, sir, Supervisor Lofton. Ms. Perkins, um, was there any particular reason that this was not included in the 2011 uh, amendment? It was just... It was, it was just a typo. It was a pretty, it was a very large revision. And, Two, two little words that were missed. <laughs> make sure there wasn't some reason back no. then why it wasn't. No. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Anyone? Thank you, ma'am. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak concerning this request? If you'd come forward, state your name, magisterial district, and limit your comments to three minutes, please. Anyone? Anyone? 
And we'll close the public hearing. How would the board like to handle this one? Move approval. A motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Any discussion? Um, I guess I just, and I probably should have asked this when uh, Ms. Perkins was sure, up there. I'd be happy to come back. Um, given uh, uh, Supervisor Lofton's question, what, what brought this to light? <laughs> We're seeing a lot more permits for the R5, and some of them have tried to use both extensions to get even closer to the property lines. So within the RP district, we already have a very small setback for these features to get to a side or rear property line, and this is allowing them to get very close. Thank you. Further discussion? Ready to vote? You don't need a roll call on this one. Okay. Supervisor Slaughter. Aye. Supervisor Wells. Aye. Supervisor Lofton. Aye. Supervisor Hess. Aye. Supervisor Dunn. Aye. Chairman votes aye and the motion carries. Brings us to board liaison reports. Are there any? Anyone? This brings us to opportunity for citizen comment on any issue. Is there anyone who would like to share with the board? Anyone? All right. Nine's on. Board of Supervisors comments. Are there any? I'd just like to uh, welcome uh, Supervisor Slaughter to the to the board, and uh, also. Uh, Welcome uh, Chairman DeHaven to the uh, to the chair. Thank you, sir. Any other comments? Anyone? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Dunn. For the record, <clears throat> we're all public servants. So over the last weekend, um, Supervisor McMahon Slaughter and I went down to Richmond. But I want the public to know and appreciate the fact that our administrator, Brendan Garden, went down there too. So she's not had a weekend break the way most of us had. She's been working now nine or 10 days in a row. And so I just want to let her know that, you know, we appreciate her service, appreciate her dedication, and also wish you well as chairman. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Supervisor Lofton. Mr. Chairman, I move we adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is a second? Second. Carried. We'll stand adjourned.